This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix. Hey, we also mentioned that Windows 8 Consumer Preview hit the streets this morning. Woohoo! You can download it, it installs over the web, and it should be spiffy with those XP boxes of yesteryear, so. Apparently, one of the I just guys downloaded the ISO myself, so. running this program is running Windows 8 on his netbook. So later on today, after the 19 hour download of the ISO, I'm going to load up one of my netbooks uh, with Windows 8. Does this imply that the code's even more efficient than they Windows 7 the, was? They are saying it's more, it's, it's basically Windows 7 plus, right? Um, one gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes available, hard disk space, DirectX capable graphics. That is the bare minimum for Windows 8 support. I've seen all this talk of gestures and whatnot, but can I still use my mouse? That is a really good question, I'm right? A mouse guy. They did a developer's preview a few months ago, and, and I remember being like this. Sucks. <laughs> I don't have a touch screen on my computer. Metro cool. sucks, right? So let's take a look at the consumer preview. The consumer preview means it's basically more done. So what we have here is a tablet, right? And you can be like, oh, it's a tablet. I can swipe. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to swipe. And a keyboard's going to come up. And I'm going to type in my, I can't type in my password while you see it. But you know, I'm going to type password. The password. I'm typing my password. Or it's one, two, three, four, five. I've already checked. Just <laughs> back off. <laughs> back a, away, a, man. A, 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 B, B, B. But you, you know, you type in your password and you get the Metro interface, which you guys can't see until. Let's go big screen. Let me plug it into this. Well, right. So unlike our earlier fears, Windows 8 is definitely mouse and keyboard friendly. It's also buzzword friendly. Cloud interactivity, app stores, social integration, lots of buzzwords. But it's kind of funny because I was, I was, I was like, I'm seeing buzzword bingo going on, and I'm like, actually, I'm playing around with the, the, the new operating system, and I like it. Now, let's take a look. What we're looking at right now is the start screen, right? So this is the Windows 8 start screen, and these things are called tiles. I'm beginning to like them. The live tiles basically, like, look at the photos as they change over. They're displaying information. Even when the apps aren't running in the background, Metro Apps has what they call, well, they support a full screen, immersive state, and minimal snapped view that runs while a second app takes up most of the screen. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. So the, I did they're, that. They're making the development on this pretty open. Um, you can build the tiles like HTML5, JavaScript, uh, Windows Runtime with JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, Visual Basic. And, and that's not just for tiles. That's for all applications of Windows 8. There's a complete Windows SDK for Metro style apps. And Metro style apps are a little different from regular apps. So. Part of the, what they do is like, they're like, screw the start button. We're going to give you a giant start screen. Right? Totally. And obviously, spread this, the information out, take up, make it more visible, more easy. And exactly. you can see where this ties in totally with something like a touch interface on a smaller screen. Bingo. So it's it's similar to the Windows Phone. It's very tab oh. it's very friendly for the tablet. And they do very different things. Basically, tablets are all about edges. Right. And using your mouse uh -huh. is all about the corners. So you know, there's like semantic touch. It's like zoom optimized. So you know, I'm going to pretend I'm using the tablet, but I can basically you know, swipe things in, swipe things out. So I, if I want to go small and look at all of my data or go big and look at one subsection of it. So you want your old school Windows desktop, it's there. You got to hit the desktop tile. That is the fish in this particular case. And boom, look, it's a Windows Icons. desktop. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want. Well, it's kind of funny. Like the mouse is about the corner. So I go in here and I hit the start button. The tablet is all about the edges. You swipe from the right. Okay, and Ooh. you get the system command, what they call the charms. You can see them up over there in the corner. Search, share, start, devices, settings. Um, swipe from the left, bring up your previous apps, which you know we don't really have a lot running right now, but let me launch Google Chrome and iTunes. I'm going to double tap on those. There's a question. Uh, current Windows 7 application should work within Windows 8? Yeah, absolutely. With drivers, too? Everything that's my, that's the thing so that's far. kind of holding me up right now. Will my video card work? <laughs> as far as I can tell, it is Windows 7. It is completely Windows 7 drivers. Sweet. It is completely Windows 7 app friendly. And you might be like, OK, well, what happens to you know, my, win my non, I don't have any Metro apps. Well, if you don't have Metro apps, guess what? They turn into you know, these little tiles. So basically, they, they reassemble your basic you know, uh, icon information into um, a little kind metro Kind of a similar tile. state to where we had apps in Windows 7 that weren't optimized yeah. for the jump list feature. And exactly. now we're kind of dealing with the same thing with the new Windows 8 desktop. Uh, not the desktop, but Metro. <laughs> Excuse me. The Metro, the desktop. The um, metro. <laughs> your timer data. So where did that come from? <laughs> Set your clock. That's what that means. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our 
set monitor just decided to tell us about stuff. So um, you, you click, you slide to drag, you pinch stretch and zoom. It's like all the basic features you're used to in a touch screen. Um, but everything's still designed to work with the mouse. So you know, I basically I bring over the mouse. Instead of sliding my applications from the side, I slide my mouse pointer over and I can click in between things. I click in between things. Except, of course, now it won't actually find my... Uh, uh, <laughs> since I'm running a demo and the cameras are running, things are going to break. So the built-in apps are pretty basic, right? You, you, they're, they're almost more like, this is a Metro application, so let's go to the store, right? It's edge to edge, it's full screen, we can scroll through here, and, <laughs> you know, basically we can look in here, we can find, oddly enough, there's no, by the way, Angry Birds. Um, what? <laughs> Uh, One place in the universe that Angry Birds isn't available? Yes, is, is on Windows 8. Yeah, well, actually, I'm sure there's a way to, you could probably download, there's probably a Windows Angry Bird app I haven't found. But like the I'm Photos sure. app, the, the big thing with Windows 8 is taking advantage of the full screen, right? And oh, look, we've got integrated SkyDrive and Facebook Photos. And the, the idea is that, you know, the, the people section where, and this is an interesting idea, so we're gonna, they're going to take everything in your life. They're going to take your email account, your Twitter account, your Facebook account, um, and of course, uh, for reasons I don't understand, it keeps refusing to log into my Twitter account, probably because Twitter hates me this week. But um, but the idea is you got spots. An yeah, we're going to blame the sunspots. An integrated <laughs> place for all that messaging works for Messenger, and Facebook uh, apps are designed to work together. It's really is, apps are really designed to work together. So the idea is like, all right, I got a blurry photo. We talked about sort of right and left brings up when you're playing around with the uh, tablet, like right and left bring up the search and the and the share and flip between the applications, but if I go bottom and top when I'm sliding, um, I get sort of the basic functionality of the application. Um, what's interesting, right, is the idea that I can go in and create links between the applications, um, like what they call app contracts. You can search across and share content between unrelated applications. The idea is that they're going to link them and help them work together. So contracts can be search, sharing, you know, playing to DLNA certified devices, app to app picking. Um, so, you know, if I want to go in there and, you know, I can hit the share and I can mail it in this case, I don't have anything else figured out. But the idea is you're going to make it super easy to move in your content from device to device or it, service to service. It almost seems like, yeah, they're looking forward to say, you know what, we haven't thought of everything that we could possibly do with this yet, considering all the new social aspects of online utilities that are available. Here's a platform that lets right. you get pretty creative in terms of how you, how you want data to interact with each other yes. and, and putting it together in a new interface that makes it... Like again, what really is striking me or sticking out the most to me is the fact that you have this interface, yet at the same point, it's good for either the big screen TV or a small screen tablet. Yes, and it's finger friendly. It's so really, I gotta say, it's more really control. Nice I like it even more than like Windows Phone. I like Windows Phone a lot. Um, mousing, like I said earlier, is about corners, um, so that you know if you want to move between applications, you click up here in the corner. I don't know if you can see it. I'm clicking up in the left, lower left hand corner. Excuse me, the upper left hand corner. I go to the lower left hand corner. I go to the Start menu, and you know I go over to the right. I get the charms. So if I want to share something or search for something, I can get all of my applications to go through. It's really interesting. Um, I'm curious to see how this uh, changes over time until the release point, but it, yeah, so far all Windows stuff Seven applications out. work. The Windows Store has, like I, I said earlier, basically went live this morning, um, and there's there's not a lot here. Um, you know, cut the rope, Pinball FX2, which is already loaded. Pirates love daisies. There's the finance, and it's kind of funny they list a bunch of the applications that are already installed. Not bad though for day one of the consumer preview, though. Right. You don't need one to run it, but a Microsoft account is, is key to sync all your personalization, your files, and your settings on whatever machine you log into. They want you to store things on the cloud, especially SkyDrive. Um, speaking of the Internet, uh, Internet Explorer 10. Ooh. Um, yeah, actually, it's kind of, I'm still using uh, Chrome as my primary browser, but they're like, you know, they, it's all about edge to edge. The, you know, the idea is they're saying they've cleaned up the interface, so they want you know, sort of easy access to open sites, um, you know, HTML5, CSS3, MScript5, blah, blah, blah. It'll still run Flash and Java in case you're worried about that. They haven't removed that. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a new task manager. Ooh. Um, and it, it's kind of interesting as you start digging down into there, like what's changed. And the task manager is fun. If you spend a lot of time, with a task manager in the past in your life, this is a little different. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm sure the old interface is buried in there somewhere. Yeah, we're working <laughs> on that. <laughs> there's actually a lot of, it, there's, 
It's interesting. Um, a lot of restore options. You can refresh, reset. You can restore from a USB drive. Um, Windows Whoa, to Go nice. is really cool. It's it's like a full corporate copy of Windows uh, loaded onto. Uh, like basically, you have your corporate loadout, all of your your OS, your apps, your security, your data, your settings on a USB stick. Nice, like portable apps, but an IT dream. Literally, from... like so, you can hand somebody a USB drive and say, "Plug this into a computer." and your work environment will be at that computer. Probably a little easier to restore a USB key than to yeah. restore a system that's been, you know, slightly modified by uh, certain web activities. <laughs> slightly kerfuffled. Kerfuffled. I gotta say, I like it. I'm I gonna run it on a Core i5 desktop. I'm gonna run it on my netbook, and we'll talk more about it next week. Email us with your, I'll look at the right camera now, email us with your Windows 8 questions, uh, techzilla at reason3.com, and I will answer as many of them as I can on Monday's show. Excellent. It's Excellent. going on my workstation it's, tonight. It's so exciting. It on. But first, a full backup of my system before I try this out. And before that, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. More than 23 million members, Veronica, me, Robert, Roger, Serafina, everybody's running Netflix. It is the world's largest subscription service that instantly streams television episodes and movies right to your face. If you're a member, you can instantly watch thousands of titles on a vast array of devices, streaming TV episodes and movies, the Xbox 360, the PS3, the Nintendo Wii, HDTVs, Blu-ray players. It's amazing. Even the Apple TV I watch on most of the time. It's great. As a Netflix Unlimited member, I can instantly watch as many movies as I want anytime I want for one low monthly price. No late fees, no due dates, and for a limited time, if you're a new member and a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla and do us a favor, use netflix.com slash techzilla so they know that we sent you. By the way, Netflix now available in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Our viewers there can get the same free trial as in the U.S. Just check out netflix.co.uk slash techzilla or netflix.ie slash techzilla.